sorry about that. It's my computer. But you can move that cross section around so that uh, you can see what what the cross section. You know what a cross section is? It's like a slice it's through <coughs> something. You can see what it's like from the side. Um, you can um, you can measure dimensions and so on and so forth. So. Why do you do all this? What's the what's the point? Uh, and it's not just to create pretty pictures. I mean, there's actually a purpose for doing all this. One is that as we're creating a design, it allows us, it allows us to go and look and make sure all the parts fit together properly. We can we can look at the mechanism in different positions and make and make sure that it's actually going to function the way we want it to by looking at how parts fit together and the uh, the clearances between parts. So when the when the when the machine is actually made, we know everything will fit together perfectly. We don't have to keep it's a lot easier to do trial and error on the computer than it is to have to do trial and error out in the machine shop. Or if the parts don't go together right, it's very expensive and time consuming to redo them over and over again until they fit. So when you actually make the parts, you want to be, you want to be sure that it's perfect, that everything goes together just right, just the way you intended. And so it's a lot easier to do your trial and error on the software. As I showed you, it's real easy to move a hole in the software. It's very difficult to do it after the parts are already fabricated. Um, so one purpose is for us to to get the design, to iterate on the design, to see how it works, and make sure we're satisfied with it. Another thing we can do is we can send these uh, viewer models to our clients. So our customer may not be here, lo may not be located here in town. They might be anywhere um, in the country. They might be in a different state. In fact, sometimes you might not ever see them. We might just talk to them on the phone, uh, get the specifications for the thing that we're designing. We'll create it for them. We'll, we'll send them this model and make them look at it, take it apart, study it from different angles. And we'll talk back and forth over the phone like that. So we may never even have to meet with our customer to design a product. Um, so that so it makes communications uh, much easier. The other the other thing that it's used for that after we're satisfied with the design and the customer satisfied with it, we can there's a there's a process for creating prototypes. There's a number of processes for creating prototypes. This is a, this is just an example. Some I had in my office. It's, this is another lock that's uh, used for uh, safe deposit lock. So electronic safe deposit lock. I didn't bring the keys, so you can't open it. But the, it's made out of a plastic material. It's called stereolithography. Have you guys ever heard of stereolithography before? Well, there's uh, there's machines that are available. We don't have one, but uh, but we can basically lease one from somebody. Or, or there's companies that provide a service. So we can we can send them a database of our parts, and they can take that database and it's like a 3D printing machine. It uses a polymer, liquid polymer, and it traces a laser out over the polymer, and as it traces a laser out, there's a little platform that goes down and continually submerges the part that has been, uh, as it's being made, and the laser keeps tracing out over the polymer, and where the laser hits the, the liquid polymer, it solidifies, so it's like a printer, but it works in three dimensions, and so you can create pl plastic parts. They're not as good as the plastic parts that might be molded in an injection mold, which is how uh, parts, you know, plastic parts and computers and telephones, it's, that's, a, that's a type of molding called injection molding. Well, that's very expensive and time consuming. The mold can cost tens of thousands of dollars, but you can get a stereolithography part made for $100, $200. You can get several of them. That's good enough for checking the, how things fit together and for demonst doing demonstrations and uh, even testing of some, of some type. So the polymer is not as good as an injection molded plastic, but it's, it's a lot better than nothing. And then they can also even do stereolithography of uh, parts that look like uh, metal. So that actually has a ceramic core, and then it's nickel plated, so it's, it doesn't quite have the strength of a metal part, but it, it's close. It's close enough to do certain kinds of testing and again show and tell and so on. Um, so that, uh, and then finally, the, with, after you've made your prototypes and you're satisfied with the design, maybe you have to go back and change some features of the design. Uh, the, the last thing you have to do is go into production. And so these these databases, like I said, the database is what describes every single part, its geometry. Those are used in the actual production of the part, either to create the molds. There are machines that can take that database and they can program the tools that actually cut the steel that creates the mold. So the, those, those machines are called CNC machines, computer numerically controlled uh, machines, and they're used to cut parts out of steel, uh, to make three-dimensional steel parts like in a mold, or they can be used to laser cut parts that are used to make sheet metal parts. Almost every type of uh, manufacturing now, the tooling that's used to create the parts is, is created on auto automated machines. And those automated machines use these very databases that we use to create the parts. That information can be fed into that automated machine, and that's what programs the machines to make the tools that are then used to make the parts. So, all these advances uh, are what allows our products these days to be so inexpensive compared to 100 years ago. Uh, 
Um, you can buy uh, cell phones and things are, are very inexpensive. I mean, uh, com really, I mean, we can, we, our productivity in this country and the, and the world has just exploded over the last uh, even few years, and especially over the last 20, 30, 50 years. And these are the kinds of tools that has allowed our productivity to expand just uh, exponentially. That means for every hour of work, we can create that much more wealth. So it's things like that. So I don't have to I don't have to work years on a drafting board to create a lot. We can create it in uh, in months, weeks, sometimes a product that might have taken years before. And so that makes us all wealthier. Allows us to have more products, less expensively. Uh, not just us, but people all around the world benefit from these advances. And, uh, and, and again, it was some uh, some computer nerd somewhere figuring out how to how to create all these mathematical shapes and how they fit together that made it all made it all possible. So. So anyway, that's that's my presentation. I don't know if you had any questions. Uh,